how many drivers went to Congress and nothing happened? Yeah. So but did they have but did they have the support of all the drivers? Huh. Or did they just go by themselves or with a group of other drivers? I mean they I mean they had they had a a a at one point it was a group of drivers that went that went to that went to Washington to try to to try to change the industry, but I don't I don't think anything materialized from it. Well that's because they had a small group of drivers. I'm not talking about a small group of drivers. So what what plan what, what what's your plan, bro? I mean what what's what's your plan? I wanna do a YouTube video. Okay. I want to have everybody that follows me be on a, anybody that follows, puts their, follows me, is going to be, have their name on a electronic petition. Oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. So now that whenever you become a follower, you just automatically sign your name up on an electronic petition. Okay. So that when I go to Congress, I have 250, 500,000, 750,000, 1 million drivers behind me. Oh. oh. Hold on right quick. Hold on. Hold on. Yep, no problem. Okay, I'm back. I right, there. I know yeah, I know you have to get up back off the floor. Uh, no, no, no! I had to get uh, I, I had to get my, I had to get my recola. That's that's what's up. But yeah, that's uh, that's 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 not a bad idea for the people that, for the people that follow you. You should. What is that? They got something online. What is that? Change. dot org. I think they got something like that. Uh, I don't know if they do or not, but, but obviously you, they ain't. But they, what, obviously they aren't doing anything about it. But what you what what do you want to change in the industry though? I mean, what what will be- I want to see? Like I said, I want to see my platform is straight and simple. I want every driver out here that drives for a company, Prime, Expo, Swift, fucking Atlas, fucking whoever's out there, whoever drives for a company, to get paid the miles that they actually drive from point A to point B. Oh. From doorstep to doorstep. Oh, okay. So what, some companies are, now would you consider that, that's that's considered hub miles, right? That's the, That's correct. That's the miles that you actually take from the, uh, the odometer. Yep. From point A, you start from point A, then you drive. Then, point. Then, then you drive whatever you drive to point B, and then you subtract the you know you subtract from there that actually give you the actual miles that you driven yep. for that day. Yep. Is that is that all miles or is that all miles or is that all my, I mean or is that miles just for the driven part? Does that include, uh, like your your PC miles too, or you you don't no. you exclude that? No, because PC miles is for your own. That's your personal conveyance. That's you using the truck to drive from your work home. Okay. You can't. You you, you couldn't really do that because the simple fact is is that you're using a vehicle, company vehicle, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or even if you own your own vehicle and you do that you're using that vehicle to get from where you where you work from to home okay that wouldn't be right okay okay so what i'm talking about is actually paying these guys from dock to dock you go pick up a load you're being paid you know, 
right when you get your load assignment, mm -hmm. if you got to drive 25 miles to go pick up or 75 miles to go pick up, you still get paid. Empty. But when you pick up your load, you get paid from that spot, from where the load starts, all the way until where the load ends. Okay. Okay. I, I'm I'm following. You're still getting you're still getting paid for everything that you drive, except for what you use as far as personal conveyance. Okay. You know, and I'm even willing to go and meet with the companies a little bit by saying you got a 5% out of route fucking deal. Because if you look at a map or even use Google, you can get from point A to point B and their miles always differ from the miles of what they say it is because they go from zip code to zip code. Right. And you losing out about what about 20 at well, I'm I'm doing percentage. So you're losing out about 10% of that route. Yeah, 10 to 15%, you know, on money. So instead of now, instead of 1000 miles, it's like it's like 990. Well, it's instead of 1000 miles, it'd be more like uh you're mm -hmm. missing out on 50 miles. So nine hundred not getting paid for nine hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's roughly five percent. I've been on I've been on trips where I've lost out on maybe, like I said, about fifteen percent, which would be the route itself says it'll say fifteen hundred miles or you know close to fifteen. It will just keep it at a straight round number. So fifteen hundred miles, but the Qualcomm says it's 1350 but in actuality is about 1500 it's in actuality it's 1500 so that's about two, so you're losing two, so you're losing money and here's 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 the kicker on the whole thing with the youtube video mm -hmm. now if you start putting numbers in front of people this is a fact when you start putting numbers in front of people tell them how much money they actually lose they get mad because you figure it out if I do a 1500 mile trip and I lose 150 miles let's do 150 miles we'll do that times say the average 50 cents a mile Okay. you just lost $75 okay. okay now you take that if you do that and you go Okay, nobody drives 52 weeks in a year. Nobody right. does. Nobody, exactly. Okay, now, let's just say, every week you get 1,500, and everybody knows we can drive 2,800, you know, 270, fuck, I don't know, 2,750 miles at, at minimum or maximum. Okay, but now, we're just going to go with 150, so 1,500 miles in a week. Okay, now you take that by, let's say, 48 weeks. So you still got four weeks left over. You got 48 weeks out of 52, 52 weeks that you, you can drive. Mm -hmm. That leaves you a month within the whole year that you drive. Okay, now as soon as you take and you times the $75 that you're losing a week times 48, you just lost $3,600. A year. That's a lot of money. Who could, who couldn't use three thousand six hundred money, uh, three thousand six hundred dollars a year? That's a lot of money. Like I said, that's a lot of money. But see, now we just did the figure at one hundred fifty. I mean, seventy five with fifteen hundred miles. You do, we'll do it this way: two thousand seven hundred fifty miles, right? And you lose. 10 to 15 percent of that so let's see uh, that'd be times point 15 mm -hmm. so that's 412 miles you lost in a week that you don't get paid for okay 412 miles times 50 cents is 206 dollars a week that you lose out of your pocket 
Now you take that and you take 206, 206 times the same week, 48. You just lost $9,888 in a year. Close to 10 grand every year you lose to companies that are taking it out of your check because they only pay from zip code to zip code instead of paying you the actual miles that you drive. That is that is something to pay attention to. I mean... Okay, uh, now, that's what I'm talking about. When I start throwing numbers at these people, they're going to start standing up and going, wait a fucking minute. You're telling me I'm losing... Ten grand a year because these silly fucking companies are taking that out of my pocket to pay for whatever thing they want. And most of the time, you can say anything. By that time, once you have them paying attention to how much money they're losing, you can throw in any stupid thing you want. That's right. See. The 10000 coming out of your pocket isn't coming out of just your pocket. It's coming out of your fellow driver's pockets also. Say you drive for a company that has, oh, I don't know, 1,500 drivers. Every year, you have 9888 taken out of it. Say you've got 1,500 drivers in that company. That means... You're going to jump when you hear this one. That means that on miles that we don't get paid for, fat cats that own these big-ass companies like Melt, Prime, Expo, are making, with 1,500 drivers, $14,832,000 by not paying us. They go out and buy their fucking stupid houses. They go buy their stupid fucking yachts. Okay, this ain't. This is the mile that they're taking out of our paychecks for paying for miles. This ain't the money that they're making off of when they already have that written into the fact that they're charging a company X amount of dollars to ship their shit. This is above and beyond what they're collecting from those guys to ship their stuff. This is extra money they're putting in their pocket. Okay, okay. You heard that, $14 million. That was like $9,888 times 1,500 people. That's $14,832,000. So the plan... Or the idea that you what you want to do is to take that to Congress and have them to uh, to regulate for us to get uh, for us to start getting paid what, what we drive. That's right. But you know, but you know, a lot of a lot of drivers have probably done that. But having seceded, what makes you think that you will secede? Because I need to have more than just a few drivers. I need the support of hundreds of thousands of drivers. There's 3.2 million drivers out here. If I have the support of 1 million of them, and at the threat of being able to stop the movement of these million drivers for one day, how bad do you think that's going to fuck up this economy? Uh, it's, it's... How bad do you think it's going to fuck up shipping? Pretty bad. Pretty no bad, shit. Pretty bad. But you got what, what do you okay. Okay, that's 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 the plan. I I, I got you. I'm following you. But what okay. do you but but what do you got for 
the renegade drivers, the ones that's the ones that's gonna that's not gonna follow the program. I'm hoping and betting on the fact that when they hear the numbers that they also actually lose, even the renegades, that they're going to stand up and look at that and say, fuck, that's not only the big companies that are doing that, it's every company that doesn't pay by hub miles. So you could be a renegade driver, you could be in a you could be in a company that's got 20 fucking drivers in it. Not every company. There's very few a handful of companies that will pay hub miles, but not very many. You look at all these other ones. You got Prime. You got Swift. You got Melton. U.S. Express. Martin. U.S. Express. Stevens Transport. Now the ones okay. that you, now the ones that you just mentioned those are like the echelon of the major of the major uh-huh. carriers, but yeah. you got but but you got small. Um, um, unfortunately, Sam, no, you got the unfor- smaller companies. Unfortunately, Sam, man, you got smaller companies that's that's going out of business because that they because they can't pay their drivers. That's because these bigger companies can fucking outbid them. You know, you're putting everything on an even playing field. Even more so now because of that Qualcomm, because of that people net. Now everybody has to run electronic locks. They put everything on an even playing field right there. Because nobody can drive over their miles. Nobody can drive their trucks any further than what they can. The bigger companies ain't going to make any less money than the smaller ones. They're just taking charge a little less. That's why the smaller companies are going out of business. It's because these bigger companies can say, well, all right, that, guy, that guy's got 25 drivers in his company. And they can come up with a whole bunch of other stuff like, you know, they don't have um, switchovers. You know, they can't, they can't um, relay shit. So if a company drives, they have to put one drive around and he's got to drive the whole route. Prime, for example, just because they're sitting right next to me, they can bring a load so far. If that guy can't finish the load, they have another prime driver come pick that load up and finish the load. Right. Because the hours that he doesn't have, small companies can't do that. That's a guarantee that Prime can fucking make. Okay, smaller companies can't compete with that because the simple fact is is they don't have the drivers to do it. And yeah, it may, it may, it probably will put even more smaller companies out of business. Yeah, the bloodbath continues, man. We're looking at about at least three, four so far that has closed their doors this year, man. Yeah, but a lot of them, believe it or not, are being bought out by larger companies. Especially... They're not just totally being shut down. And that's There's all... There's been a few of them. And that's, yeah, all, go ahead. and that's all being played in the background. We, we The only yep. thing we see is major company such and such shut down, or small company such and such shut down because of this, that, and the third. But quiet is kept... They they were sold off to a to to another company. That's right. That's the reality of it. We're not told that though, because it's not news. Right. News is when a company gets shut down. That's news. Or a co- or a company or a company you know has to shut down. That's news. When a company gets shut down and another company comes in and says, "Hey man, we don't want to see that happen. We want to pick up your accounts." And we want to we want to help your drivers out by taking and buying your company from you. That's not news. We don't see that, and that happens quite frequently. So it's not like the company goes away. Besides that, the guy that owns it gets a fat fucking check now, or he seeks out a company to buy his company. 
so that he doesn't actually have to shut down. He can just go, hmm, I make a uh, half a million dollars off of it. I don't really lose nothing. My drivers get still get to fucking drive, and my accounts get taken care of. All right, I'll sell it to you for half a million. And these fat cat companies, Swift, Prime, Because now he doesn't have to fucking do anything. He can sit back and he can liquidate the trucks that he already has. Or the, the trucks that he already has that his fucking people are in get moved to the new company. They get the new company name on there and they keep rolling. That's the reality of it. And that happens all the time in business. Everywhere. Look at look what Vince McMahon did. He did his a little bit more ruthlessly, but he did the same thing. He come in and said, hey, man, you guys are too small to operate, for real. You know, we can mow you down or we can buy you out. And they said, what's your offer? And he said, here's X amount of dollars. How about that? And he makes the offer look good because they're going to look at it and go, well, fuck, man. You know, that's more money than I usually make anyway, so all right, I'll sell you my wrestlers, and bang, his wrestlers are gone. He makes a bunch of fucking money, and he's out of the business. He doesn't have to deal with it no more. So you think he has you know something? To, he, you, you think he has something to do with that AEW shit now? Um, no, that was built by uh, Sheik's son oh, out okay, of uh, okay. Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, Cody Cody Rhodes owns part part of that. The Rhodes family they okay. own part of that. Um, and a couple other fucking wrestlers own. There's a tag team in there that they, they own part of that company too, and they run AEW. Oh, okay, okay. But that's a good, but that's a good example, though. Uh, that's mm-hmm. a good example. But uh, so, so Sandy, man, I, how, how, how you got how, questions? How, go ahead and ask them. How 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 do we get the movement start? How 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 do we get how how do we get the movement start? What what what, just, what do we need to do this to get the movement going? I need what I need is a YouTube video made with all my fucking facts and written numbers and shit that written down. Right, you know, as I'm doing the video, I show people how much money they're actually fucking losing. Okay. Okay. Now, every truck stop I go to. Because you know damn sure, man, I'm not going to be in trucking that long if I start this. Because any company I work for is going to fucking look right at me and go, you're trying to wreck me. Exactly. And a lot of these bigger trucking companies, because I'm going to be taking money out of the fat cat's pockets, might just try and kill me. I wouldn't go that far. Would they? You think they if they wanted to stop somebody taking fifteen million dollars a year out of their pocket? Oh yeah, they're yeah they're going yeah, but I don't think they're going to. Man, this this is uh this this is a new millennial man. I don't think they're going to go that far. They'll probably they probably might bring you know probably might you know get their lawyers and stuff like that. But I don't think they're going to go as far as to try to get you assassinated. Well, they can't sue me. They can get their lawyers. They can't sue me for anything. I mean, it's for real. They, they can't. They, to revolutionize or to fucking have a revolt against the company and you know, make sure that these companies pay out what they actually should be paying out in the first place? How are you going to sue me for that? Yeah, you got all these people, all these truck drivers out here. I can get on the CB right now and start fucking just blathering my shit and say, "Hey, meet me by meet me by my the front of my truck. I'm sitting right here." I guarantee you, man, that most of the people that have their fucking CBs on are gonna walk over to my truck and at least listen to what you got to say. Exactly, because they're gonna want to know. What the fuck I mean? How I'm going to do it? And they got questions. And I bet you 10 bucks I can answer them. That's what I want the YouTube video to do. I want it to open up the forum where they can actually write in and say, you know, all right, well, what about this? And then I can look at it and I can fucking put on another YouTube video and say how the fuck I cure that 
or fix it. Well, see the difference. the the thing The thing with YouTube is is that if you're gonna do something like that, you you gonna you you got to do it like like a live type deal. Uh, you got to do it like you know, like do it like a a little bit of a live feed. First, first thing first, you you say you want to start the channel. So first thing first, you got to get a following. So uh, yep. you got to get a following. You know, once you get a following, because this this trucker niche, 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 whatever, this niche. This, this niche on YouTube is so congested, bro. It is it it is so congested. It's like. The idea that you have is a great fucking idea. I like it. I'll follow you. But the problem is you're going to be like like a smidgen in this in in this YouTube in this YouTube waters, man. So, yeah, for a little you, for a little while. Right. So what you're going to have to do is you you I, I will say, start a Facebook group. Um, start a Facebook group because with a Facebook group, you're you, you starting to you you able to get a little more of a following there. You know, you 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 start a group, you go to you know different truck stops or something like that. You. Uh, you know, you talk to these truck drivers and say, hey, you know, start a conversation with them. And if you want to continue the conversation, come on over to Facebook. Because nine times out of ten, majority of these truck drivers are in Facebook groups. Yeah. So if you start a group specifically for that, for 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 your niche, for for uh, for truck drivers getting paid all the miles that they want to get paid. That's something that truck drivers is going to be interested in. Yeah, I know. You 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 start you start that then from there when you get a, when you get a niche uh I mean when you get a niche when you get enough people in the group like maybe like 400, 300, 1000, 2000 or more, then you could say, "Hey, I got a I got a YouTube page." If you guys want to know more or y'all want to come and, uh, you know, come and um, and see, you know, see facts, see what I got. Come on over to my YouTube page and you can uh, those thousands of, of, of members that's in your group. It's going to come over to the Facebook page. I mean, over to the YouTube page and follow you. Yeah. And then that's how you will build. That's how you will build from there, from the YouTube page. And I mean from your from from your Facebook to integrate it into the YouTube. And then yep. and then from there, you said you want to get a petition going. So you could start a petition like at change.org or something like that. You could start a <laughs> you could start a petition. Go to your Facebook group and say, hey, I got the petition up. All I need you to do is sign it. If you 100% support me, come on over and sign it. And then, bro, then you could take that petition with you to Congress. And then maybe, just maybe, Congress will listen to you. Yeah, I need enough people to follow. I need enough people to fucking... You know, say, yeah, that's a good idea. It is a good idea. So that's what you're going to have to do. Like I said, when, when, you, when, you, when you start your Facebook group, when you start your Facebook group, start the group, and then start planting bugs in these driver's ears. Like when you go up to a fuel island, when you go up to a fuel island and just be like, hey, bro, um, you, do you, do you get paid hub miles or do they pay you zip to zip or 
or or just start asking the question like how do you feel about how do you feel about the miles you're getting with your company and then you could start a conversation like that and then you could be like okay well you know i got this facebook group that we talking about just that we're trying to get some people together to um to change that it's 2020. There's a lot of new. There's a lot of new drivers that's coming in now. That's that these big fat rat companies are taking clear advantage of oh, because yeah. they because they don't know. They don't know. So you 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 take that. You take them. You know. You plant the bug in their ear. You educate them so they'll know. Like, oh, okay. Well, you know what? That's funny. I, I was I, I it was one route that I it was one route that I got was uh fifteen hundred and they and they only gave me eighteen fifty. Can they do that? Yeah. So you get you you plant that bug in their ear and then they'll go back and be like you know, they'll go back and tell, you know, their co drivers or their friends or whatever and like, yo, you know this uh this guy in this Facebook group is trying to put a petition together so that we can get paid all our miles. So yeah, yep. start start with the face start with the Facebook group, uh, Sandy. You you start with the Facebook group, and then from there you can you can integrate it over into YouTube, and then from there you can integrate it into uh, Change.org, and then you'll get a you'll you'll get a buzz. But I I do want to tell you this, bro. I really don't. Yeah. I really don't think that. You, I really don't think that you was the first person that come up with this idea. I'm sure. I already. I, I already know I'm not. I'm. I'm sure. But see that did. But see right there. That fucking tells me. I'm not the first person to come up with this idea. Mm -hmm. But I believe I am the person to fucking make it get bigger and actually change the shit. Okay, I feel you. I feel you. I think, uh, I think, uh, now if you got a bunch of people out there that have already tried this and they get nowhere, it's because they had too small of a group of people to start it and do it and finish it. Okay, you got a large enough group of people behind you, you can move mountains. One person, that's what they meant by that. One person can move mountains if they've got a group of people, a large enough group of people behind them to help them move them out. You know what? If, if, um, if, uh, if leaders back in the day could do it, I think it's, it's going to take that, it's going to take that strong person. It's going to take that strong person to make it happen. And if, yeah. you, and if you feel that you're that strong person, man, I, I'll support you. I mean, you got. Well, uh, I'll, I'll support you. As a matter, of, as a matter of fact, we will. Like I said, we we we. I'm recording now, so we. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely. I figure I would, you might be. I, I would definitely get this up on uh up on the up on the podcast next week, man, and and um and we could we we could start, you know. You can, you can well, that's one of the reasons that I called you in the first place. Oh, well, I appreciate that, bro. Thank you for thinking of me to do something. <laughs> no, 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 because that, I know that you like to do this shit. I know, you, I know you love doing it. And I know that you're one of the people that would actually, because we talked about it before, mm -hmm. that would actually stand up. And that's what you're doing right now by recording. That's and you want to put it on your podcast. You want to stand up. That's what's up. Like I said, I and I do agree with you. I mean, if we get if 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 it gets to like like a like a big point, it is gonna yeah. get, it is gonna catch the attention of of these of these fat rat companies, man. For real. Well, see, I want to be able to get to the point where before I even go to Congress, that it's already been aired on TV. Because once you get to a certain point, like, 
say for instance, I did YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Even if I just started out on YouTube and did a video and did all the figures right out in front on a, you know, whiteboard, wrote all the figures down, wrote all that stuff down, showed people how much money they're fucking losing each year because they're not getting paid the miles that they actually drive to get from point A to point B. How long do you think it might take for that YouTube video to explode oh, into a fact that. where people are going to look at it and go, whoa, this guy went from 10 followers to 10,000 followers oh, like two or three days. Of course. You, and then you he went make from, it viral. Exactly. You're going to make it, you, so, you, you make it viral. That's why I said with, yeah, that's why I said, I mean, you could, you could do that with YouTube, but because of the niche that the, this trucker's niche right now, you know, it's going to probably, yep. you know, the, the waters is already full. You know what I'm saying? But if you, if and you, the waters you, are full, you're if, right. The waters are full. If but you see, that's just the point. If the waters are full, that means there's already people out there that want this change. So if I get those people that are out there that, are, that the niche has already been, is, is already getting into, then they're going to start pulling all their, all their people and all their resources over to me. Because if I'm actually going to do what I say I'm going to do, and you know me, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Exactly. I don't just say it. I don't just say it. Exactly. Exactly. So all these people are going to jump in. So all these people that are out there that are individualized, so to speak, are going to start looking and going, wait a minute. We can get behind this guy. And they all start coming in. Then they all start telling their people. Their people start following in. Other people start following in. Hell, the guy's wife who sits at home and, and watches YouTube videos all of a sudden sees a YouTube video because it's, it's, it's starting to become viral. Sees that her husband's getting ripped off every damn year. She's going to fucking damn sure call her husband and go, hey, man, there's this guy on YouTube you got to see. And that's how and it bam, works. There's another follower. And there's another follower. Not only one, I got the driver who's going to look at it and go, damn, this guy makes sense. And this is somebody that we could probably get behind. His wife, his wife is also going to follow too. Because of the simple fact that her husband's getting fucking ripped off. She, in turn, is getting ripped off. You see how that's going to change and just bash the shit out of everything. Everything. It's going to be like one gigantic baseball bat with barbed wire wrapped around it, smashing somebody in the side of the head. Oh, man, you, you, you over here talking that dude from The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even really watch The Walking Dead. Oh, that. man. You talking, about, you, you talking about that cat. What, what's his name? Negan? <laughs> yeah, that's it, Negan. <laughs> so, but... And that was just an analogy I was using because, you know, I watch wrestling, too. So, you know, I've seen a lot of baseball bats and, you know, wrapped in barbed wire. You know, um, Mick Foley did that shit for a while. Mm-hmm. But it, it's just an analogy. It's, a, you know, it's it's a visual effect. You know, the baseball bat wrapped, wrapped in barbed wire is, our, is the organization. And the guy that's getting bashed in the side of the face is these companies. You know, it, it's going to take notice. Now, once you get that whole turn and everybody starts blowing up the fucking internet with this shit and it turns viral, then the people on the TV networks, the news, are going to want to know what's going on and why. They're going to want to interview me. They're going to want to interview the organization. So all of a sudden, it gets on the news. The news goes nationwide because they have affiliates everywhere. Mm -hmm. Channel 9 is not just Channel 9 out of Minnesota. You know, Uh, uh, Fox. Fox is not just Fox out of Minnesota. It's out of Indiana. It's Mm -hmm. out of Ohio. Mm -hmm. It's out of everywhere. New York, everywhere. So not only is the one station going to pick that up, 
but they're going to want to put it on all the network affiliates that they have. You talk CNN. How big is that format? Once you get put on CNN and they start asking you all these questions, how many people you think are going to look at this and go, oh my God, my son works for a trucking company. Oh my God, my nephew works for a trucking company. Get your gets on. And sooner or later, the government is going to have to fucking stand up and listen. There ain't going to be no, hey, man, I need to get into the Congress and talk to him about this. They're going to be wanting to call me up and go, hey, man, we need to talk about this. Because this shit's all over the news. It's all over the place. What is your, you know, what's your deal? Why, why, why are you doing this? Right down there, I'm instantly in Congress. And that's how you get. And right. That's how you get the word out. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. That's, See, that, that's you, you, you got to start. You got to start at. You got to start at a, a base. You got to have your base. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you got to let it grow. But as you make it grow, I can get on the CB and I can cover maybe thirty percent of the people that are in this lot right now. This lot has 250 spots for people to sit. I can stand over by the doorway there with a piece of paper that has all the, you know, that has a base of all this, all this stuff that I'm talking about on it. And every truck driver I see walk by me, I say, here, take a look at this. And you put in bold print right at the top. Would you like to be paid the miles? That, you know, I'm not from a trucking company. I'm a representative of revolution for truckers okay okay that's that's what i want the that's what i want the fucking thing to be called is revolution for truckers okay i like that i like that i like that resident okay, no. what is re, what would you say re, re, revolution revolution for truckers. revolution right i'm in it for the truck driver i ain't in it for the companies because i'm sick and tired of my fellow truck drivers getting screwed I'm tired of getting screwed by these companies that keep doing this shit. Hey, we're going to pay you so many. Now, there's their whole thing. We're going to pay you 50 cents a mile to drive for us. Did they just get done telling me that they want to pay me 50 cents a mile to drive for them? Yes. Did they forget to tell me that they want to pay me 50 cents a mile for what they think the miles are? No. They told me they want to pay me fifty cents a mile. They don't. Te- drive. They don't tell you that. the The recruiters don't tell you that. They, the 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 golden thing for recruiters is that they just tell you how much they want to pay you per mile. Per mile. But they don't. Yeah, but they tell never you, say. But they don't say. They they don't break it down and be like, oh, okay, well, we'll pay you fifty cent a mile, but it's it's from zip to zip, so you're going to lose out. Of about 10, 15, 20 percent of, of, of your miles. But you still yeah. gonna, but you still gonna get 50 cent a mile though. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. They're telling us that they're gonna pay us 50 cents a mile. I ran into this a couple of days ago when I asked for a day off, and I had the company come back to me and said, well, we thought you were done with your things at one one thirty, so we figured that you were going to drive after that. Okay, motherfucker, I said I wanted a day off. What's a day? A day is a 24-hour period. As far as I remember, it was all the way back to school. They told us a day is 24-hour period in time. If I ask for a day off, does that mean it's 12 hours? Does that mean it's 18 hours? Does that mean it's 10 hours? 10 no. hours. It means it's 20. That means it's 24 hours. A day is 24 hours long. Seven days a week. So if you ask for a day off, does that mean you just ask for 10 hours off? Does that mean you just ask for 14 hours off? You ask for a whole day off. Where's the confusion in that? They were confused by when I wrote, I wanted a day off. A day is a 24-hour period. It's not whatever they make it up to me. And that's what they're getting away with on every count. 
They get away with that shit when you want days off. Oh, they've been getting. They get away they, with that shit. They've been getting away with that, man. They, they, that's exactly. They've they been getting away with that. Um, and they and they get away with saying we're going to pay you fifty cents a mile. They don't pay you fifty cents a mile. They pay you fifty cents a mile. Yes, they pay you fifty cents a mile of what they think of, think the miles are. The miles aren't. The miles are what the actual miles are. So they're lying to you right off the bat. Number one. Two, they're stealing out of your pocket. They're stealing money right out of your pocket. And they, they look at it and they don't care about it. They don't. They just look at it and they go, how much money am I making a year off of doing this besides charging these people to dry, to uh, for the other companies that I'm moving their stuff for? You know, I charge them X amount of dollars to move their stuff. I tell, I, I give them, I, I pay my driver, but I'm still making extra amount of money off of it because I'm only paying my driver from zip code to zip code instead of from hub or from uh, dock to dock. You know, you're going to have some drivers that's going to come in and and debunk what, what, what you're saying because it's all, they, they're going to come in and be like, well, it's all about finding a company. It's all about finding a company to uh, to 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 work for that'll pay you the miles for the uh, for the, for the whole hub miles. And that's the problem. That's the biggest problem right there. You have to find one that does that. I already said there's a handful. How many hundreds? How many thousands of brokers are there out there? How many thousands of companies are out there that do the same thing? How many companies are out there that'll pay you the actual miles that you're driving? A handful. You got a thousand companies out there. Let's just put it in simple terms. You got a thousand companies out there that pay their drivers from uh, from zip code to zip code, you've got 10, 15, 20, maybe 50 at the most companies that actually pay from dock to dock. They only have a certain amount of people that they can employ because they're not big enough to grow, nor do they really want to, or maybe they just want to stay the way they are. So they don't want to grow at all. So if you find a company out there that says, hey, we can pay you by a hub, how many drivers do you think they're going to hire? One, two, three? Do you think they're going to hire a thousand? They're not going to hire a thousand people to drive for them because they like what they're doing. They like remaining in that, in that position. Either that or they can't grow because these other bigger companies prime. Landstar, uh, fucking Stevens Transport, uh, Swift, all these other companies. Mm -hmm. They have thousands of drivers driving for them because they want to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Each one of these companies keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Therefore, they can lower their prices. So anybody who's shipping anything can look and go, Swift man, they can do it for forty eight hundred, and this other company wants to do it for fifty five hundred, and that's the reason that they can't grow and get any bigger, is because they get outbid. That's a damn shame too. When you think about it. Now, even your brokers, they do the same thing. The brokers are the worst ones of the bunch. They are, if you look at it right. If you, I mean, not right, but if you look at it, because they get a hold of these owner operators who are already pissed off because they don't get paid as much as they should. Right. There's a reason that they're not getting paid as much as they should. They go through a broker. The broker is only going to pay them what they want. The broker already knows how much they're getting paid, how much extra money they can pay by having a, a truck driver who's an owner operator pick up a load and ship it from one spot to another spot. 
they already know how much they need to pay that guy. And even if that guy says, oh, I can't do it for that, they'll incentivize that driver by saying, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a $250 bonus if you do that. And the driver goes, 250 bucks, damn. Now, the simple fact of the matter is, is that bonus that they're offering them drivers is not a bonus coming up. It's, it's the money that's coming out of the, the extra money that they're making. That it's like, it, it's a bonus just trying to sweeten the pot, but it's the actual money. Right. It's the actual right. money that they already made from, it's, it's from the, the, the people that they're shipping from. Right. But you, so they're not getting broke. the bonus. They're getting the miles. They're getting the miles. Not, now they're getting the actual or, or more, maybe even close to the actual miles that they should be getting paid in the first place. These brokers, how do they get away with lowballing so much, though? Because they're one little entity. They can keep their costs down. They're making so much money off this shit. Because of the simple fact is, is that the broker can say, all right, Swift charges you this much for it. I can charge you this much for it. And then I turn around and I pay the driver a certain percentage of it. They still make money off of it, no matter what they do. Because that's what they do. They make money off of it. They don't care. How, they really don't care how much money they make off of it. Their shit is to get, they're, they're, that's why I say they're worse than big truck companies because they can come in there and they can say, they can lowball shit because they're still making a huge amount of money and all they have to do is hire a driver to do it. They're just hiring a driver to do it. They're not paying him for everything. They're not paying for his insurance. They're not paying for his fuel. They're not paying for none of that shit. The driver is. Now we, they're making it, they're making it. Now when, yeah, you, go ahead. now when you now, now when you look at it now when you look at it this way, and you said that they just hiring a driver. Yeah, it's the it's it's the driver. It's it's the driver's turn to actually figure to actually say that he wants to take that load or not, because you got if 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 driver A is not going to take the load for that amount. Then driver B and driver C is. How do you combat yep. those those particular drivers? Well, the simple fact of the matter is, is that owner operators, man, they feel cheated already. Right. Because of because of these logs and shit. Now, on these apps, the you know, of course, from the phones and shit like that. Each one of these drivers has the ability to say yes or no on it on a load that they want to pick up, whether they think they can make money off of it or not. Right? Right. And what you got, what you got is some of the newer drivers that come out here. And I don't want to, you know, like I said before, I, I, I ain't trying to sound racist on this part, but you have other drivers that are so willing to take a smaller amount of money in order to get a load so that they can make a little bit of extra money off of these loads and they'll run them as much as they can. That's why you see a lot of these drivers out of these newer drivers driving with double with two people instead of one. You rarely see an, an owner operator. Rarely do you see an owner operator with one person driving solo. You see them team drivers. And the reason that they're team driving is because they can get that load from that for that broker over to another spot as quick as they can. Okay, when they get it as quick as they can, then they believe that they're actually making more money off it. You know, we have already gone through that whole scenario of of how much money they're wasting in fuel and shit like that to run the fast miles. You know, they'll break laws. They'll go seventy five miles an hour in a seventy mile an hour zone. But these are team drivers that are doing this shit. Ain't no solos doing it. Very few solo drivers are doing broker loads because they can't meet the quite criteria that the broker has set up for them. Because the broker looks at it and says, all right, I'm going to bid on this one. It's a two-day load. 
it's 1,500 miles. Solo driver can't make that. Ain't no possible way. Team uh, driver can, though. 1,500 miles, that's a, 1500 miles, that's a two-day trip or a two-and-a-half-day trip. And a team day, driver. A two-and-a-half-day trip. And a team driver's. Team driver, yep. that's that's a that's a that's a one day trip for a team driver. Exactly my point. So now you got team drivers out there, and most of these owner operators have figured that out. They figured out that they need a team to do stuff like this in order to work with brokers. I walk into TAs, I walk into pilots, I walk into wherever, and there's all kinds of shit out there on, on the pegboards of the site. Um, you know, if you need loads, call this broker. If you need this, call this broker. If you need that, call this broker. So there's thousands of fucking brokers out there. And these team drivers, they call them up because that's who they're working for. The owner operator is working for brokers. Rarely do you see owner operators working for a large company because they know that they can get broker loads. So they can go from point A to point B and drop out that load as quick as they can, call the broker for another load, or bid against two or three other drivers for another load going out from there to another spot. But in order to in order to in order to work for brokers though, don't you got to be don't you have to have your own authority in order to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Well it's not really that hard to get your own authority. It really isn't. I mean, all you have to do is go to a state that you live in and file for it. And that just takes money. Okay. And you can get your own and you can get your own DOT numbers. There's your authority. You just need the insurance to cover behind it. Because that's what that's what it takes is the insurance, the bond, you know, the bond insurance shit. That's what the companies look for. That's what the uh, brokers look for. Are you bonded for driving? Yeah. Get your own numbers? Yeah. All right, well, here's a load for you. Bam, they take the load and they're gone. And they drive it. So it's, it's not it's not rough. It's not roughing up any system. It's just making sure that these fat cat fucking companies and other people that are operating underneath the spectrum, i.e. the brokers, because they don't have to do anything to do what they do. You know, they don't have to be licensed. They don't have to be anything. I can become a broker. You can become a broker. <laughs> all we need to know is all we need to know is companies and whether they're you know what they're shipping and when they're shipping. They ship just about every day. So all you need to do is get a hold of the companies, find out what they do to do shipping. You know, if you can get on their list, they send you they send you stuff. I've seen it in the company that I work for right now. I walk in there because they use brokers every once in a while. They look through a laundry list of stuff for certain brokers that they have underneath their belt, yeah, so to speak. That's the company. The comp and they look at it. The company I the, the company I drive for we we do. Um, I I say maybe fifty seventy. I say seventy five percent of my loads is broker loads. I'm I'm like every time I get a every time I get a load, I get a um I get a uh I get a phone call from a broker. Hey, this is such and such from such and such. You 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 uh moving our product and stuff like yep. that. And we need we you got, to download this app so we, we can track exactly. you and blah blah blah. Yep. Yep. The uh what's okay, now name? think about that. Now think about that for a minute. Just for a minute. Just okay. take a minute out and think about that. Okay. You work for a company that handles broker loads. Mm -hmm. Sure do. Now, now, the broker gets so much out of it. Your company gets so much out of it. And, I and get, you get, and I get so I, much out of it. I get so much out of it. Okay, you can go back to, like, the old days, you know, um, just as an analogy, so to speak. Okay. That you do know that when one person has something and then it gets shifted to another person, that the price kind of goes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then when you shift it to another person, because everybody's got to make their money. Mm -hmm. Right? 
So it just shifted from one to another to another, and then finally you. Who's ultimately paying the most? The final person, you. So two, three companies have their hands in it. The company you work for, the broker, and the main company. Right. Let's say, for instance, you were actually able to get a hold of the main company, be your own broker. So you find companies that you want to work for. Okay. You say, all right, this is going to cost you $3,000 to ship this from point A to point B. They say, well, wow, that's cheaper than most companies. Want to know why you can do that? Because nobody else is taking money out of that pot and adding their, their own fee into it. And that's why we get paid less. Do you think for one damn minute, man, that 50 cents a mile out of a fucking company's pocket paying for this shit is any dent in what they make off the fucking load to begin with? It isn't. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. What about for the dri- What about for the drivers that get paid percentage? Now, that one I really haven't taken a really long look at because I've never really had to get into percentage loads. But it seems to me that they make, they might make a little bit more, or they might not. Because you got a company that can tell you, and this is, this is where everything gets clouded. You say, for instance, you got a company that you want to drive, and you're going to take a percentage, right? Okay. They charge... They charge the main company. They, okay, you work for a company that's going to give you a certain percentage of the load that's you're, that you're driving for. Now, when they go and they find out how much that company has in the back of the truck, right, the company you work for can turn around and tell you as a driver, hey, man, um, the shipment that you got in there, is only about uh, ten thousand dollars worth of stuff. In actuality, it could be twenty five, thirty, thirty five thousand. How the hell do you know? For real? How does the driver know that the the driver that's getting the percentage? How does he know exactly how much is in the back of his truck? He doesn't. They can tell you what you want to know. They can tell you what you want to hear. But to, are they going to tell you the truth? How many trucking companies out there tell you the truth? <laughs> Not that many. About anything. Not, About anything. Not that many. Very few. Very, okay, okay, then very what makes true. Okay, then how do you know that they're telling you on the percentage miles that that's actually how much money is in the back of your truck? You don't. They can tell you anything they want. Because... They don't tell you the truth in the first place about anything. Well, I tell you so what. You have no idea. I, I I tell you what. I like I said. I, I I'm I, I'll support you. I'm one hundred percent. If you need a if you need a backing and need a voice, something like that, you need a platform. You definitely came to the right person, man. So I, you know, well, I appreciate it. But one reason that I, that's one reason that I called you in the first place, man, is because I know that you'll, that, that not that I knew for a fact that you'd support me, but you would, you know, kind of give me a smaller platform to start with, or even a platform to begin with. That's definitely, man. And if I want to go further than that, I know that I could probably meet up with you somewhere for with a couple of days off and. Oh yeah, we can make a bigger platform. Oh yeah, oh yeah, most definitely, man. We definitely can get together and, uh, I guess, what you call the whiteboard, and <laughs> get the numbers out there, because that's what, yeah. they, like you said, that's 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 what that's what you need is the numbers, and you you start. Talking well, when they start numbers. seeing the numbers, then they start looking, and they're like, "Wait a minute, man! I've been driving a truck for fifty years and these guys will rip me off how much that's throughout sucks. the years yeah buddy that's <laughs> how much money you've lost but see 
This trucking industry right now is gold mine. Okay? You know it and I know it. There's so much stuff being shipped via truck. The companies will hire just about anybody. Look at the government. Look at what Donald Trump's trying to do. He's trying to lower the driving for CDL drivers from 21 to 18 because there's so much of a need for truck drivers. Because shit is being shipped everywhere. These these truck stops, you know just as well as I do, just as well as anybody that drives a truck. If you don't show up to these truck stops by a certain time, are you going to get a spot to park in? Nope. Hell no. Nope. nope. That's because there are so many drivers out here. And even and if, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And even if you do make it and even if you do make it to a spot at these truck stops, you got all these 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 make a make a parking spot driver that's blocking your way. So yeah. Right. Yeah. If you if you're not there by by a certain time, mm. Nah, and that's with the major ones. Not that the mom and pops, you'll probably be able to be better off getting with a mom and pop. But the majors, the the petros, loves flying jays, and so I forth. And so forth. If you if you're not there by a certain time, mm-mm, brother man, mm-mm. yeah, you ain't getting a spot. Mm-mm, you ain't getting a spot. You ain't getting one. You're gonna have you to, have to create your own. You're gonna have to create your your own, or hop on that PC and and drive down the way until you find one. Yeah, and hopefully you don't get an hour of service violation while you're trying to do it. No, you no, bro. No, you can PC to a uh, um. Uh, you can PC to a to a safe haven, man. You 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 can. Well, do yeah, that. that you can do. You can do that. So if your safe haven is about an hour down the way, then you you're pretty good. You know, I mean, if you should get pulled over or something like that, and uh, you know, and the DOT officer, you know, you tell him like, hey, you know, the loves that was behind me is all filled up, and I can't I can't park there. You you don't want me parking on a ramp. You don't want me parking on the side of the on on, on the side of the shoulder. So I got to keep driving until I find a spot, you know. So, yep. So yeah, we we can't we can do we we can do that. Trust me, I've been in many situations that I had to do that. Get on a get on a uh, get get finish. I mean, get finished loading, and I pull over to the side where I'm thinking I'm good. Get somebody knocking on my door. Hey, bud, uh, you can't stay on the property. But, but I'm I'm out of hours, man. Uh, that's not my problem. Not my problem. Yeah. You 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 got to move. And even and and let's say and, and let's say you argue with him, and you be like, no, nah, man, I'm not going to move. I can't move. I'm out of hours. I'm not. No, hey, I'm not here moving. Comes tow truck. Here comes here comes either a tow truck or uh or um uh, or or a, fi- or a cop coming over here telling you. Yo, this is private property, and and uh, and you're trespassing right now. Well, wait a minute, how am I trespassing yeah. if I just picked up the load? Yep. I did, wait, I got their products on the back of my truck. So how am I? Yeah. How am I trespassing, bruh? Well, you you yeah. can't you can, you can't stay here. You 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 gotta go. So now you gotta get in the PC. And then you got to start driving down the way until you find somewhere. And it would be, and, and hopefully that cop that told you to move won't be a fucking dick and do what you just said, give you an out of service violation. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, any, any illegal rights, he can actually do that. Right. He'd be like, bro, man, you just told me to move. So I, I uh, but you, you're, you're out of service, so you're not supposed to be moving. Yeah, yep. but you told me to move. Like, okay. So yeah, just write me up the ticket so I can fight that in court, bro. So, you know, and then you got to take time off and you lose you money because you got to go fight this thing in court. Exactly. 
So it's crazy, man. It, it, it's crazy. But that that that's a good idea, uh, Sandy. Uh, that's a good idea. That's a that's a good plan. You you put that plan in motion, man, and 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 we could try and get a following. You know, I've been, said, I've that, been I've been thinking about this for at least a month. And every time I show up at a truck stop, I want to turn that CB on. Or get a con- just go. Or get a conversation going. Don't just do it. Do it. Like when you get into a truck stop, like, yo, how how's y'all how how do you guys uh feel about y'all y'all miles that y'all driving? Are y'all getting are y'all getting all the miles you're driving or are you, you getting you getting whatever the whatever the company is giving you? And I guarantee you, you got you got you got guys from Swift, US Express, you got guys from Prime and all them other ones that does the that does the zip to zip that'll come over to you and be like, yo, tell me how, bruh. And we can and, and you can and you can go from there. All right, man. I that, all right, man. This is a good ass conversation, man. I wish I can continue on with it, but I gotta get up. I gotta get up later on tonight and do some night driving. So no but, worries, uh, dude. But uh, man, thanks, man. I I appreciate you uh thinking of me to to chop it up with me uh, uh about this about uh, about this, man. What's the title? I should title this, man. What's what's the title? I should give this a title. I don't even know. I don't even know what the. I don't even know what the title is. Uh, not I don't me. either. But uh, I know the title of what the the thing that I want to do is going to be revolution. Revolution of truck for truckers. Revolution. For, rev, revolution. Revolution for mm-hmm. truckers. And you can always start it out by saying something crazy like, "This is the start." This is the start of the conversation. This is the start of the revolution for truckers. <laughs> the start of a revolution for truckers. I'll, I'll figure. I'll, I'll figure it. Uh, I'll, I'll figure a title for it, and I'll have. Uh, I'll go ahead and have the link. The link for you to share when I get finished, man. All right, so oh, I'm, about yeah. to, I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to kill the. Uh, I'm about to kill the recording. But hey, what happened? Yo. What happened at Shrugle, man? You was. You was going to tell me. Yeah, well, you kill your recording, I'll tell you. Yeah, I did it already. We're good. Okay. We're good. Um, I went out. I went out after after that truck fire happened, man. I said, "Fuck, man!" I was just totally bummed out, so I stopped driving for like two weeks. Right. Right. And they called me up, and they're like, "Hey, dude, you gonna come back to work or what?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I suppose." And I went back to work for a week, and on a weekend, um, in May, we go up to Cass Lake to go fishing. While I fished a bunch of me and a bunch of buddies of mine, mm-hmm. and uh, we went up there, and they're like, "Fucking do it, man!" You, 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 you know, you're bumming us out. And I'm like, "Look, man, you guys already know what the hell happened." They're like, "Well, you, you know, I almost died on a fucking truck fire." They're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we know, <laughs> but we're fishing, man. This is supposed to be a good time and shit like that." So I said, "Fuck you guys, because I, I don't like drinking." I never have and never will. Okay. I mean, I, had, I, I ain't, a, I ain't, you know, I'm dick and saying, oh, we are fucking drunk. No, but no, I ain't like that. I just don't like to drink because I don't like the after effects of drinking and shit like that. So I said, fuck this, man. I grabbed this dude's uh, stick, you know, that electronic fucking wand type shit, the electronic cigarette fucking kind of deal. Oh, okay. And, and they have those for like, you know, marijuana. Oh, so I said, fuck this, man. I took two hits. And, man, I'll tell you, I got fucking wasted. When they, I got back to Shugel, and they ran, when I got back to Shugel, they ran, it was the they, same day. They random drug tested you. Yo, oh, not only drug tested, they random gave me a UA and breathalyzer. Wow. And they busted me for a fucking UA, so they fired me for it. So they you you went to that um you went to that uh, that, clinic, that clinic up the street. No, I did a SAP program, and the lady on the uh, that I was doing the SAP program for, she said, "Well, she goes," <laughs> and when I told her everything that happened, she's like, "I really don't have any recommendations for you." She's like, 
I don't know what the hell I can do. She goes, I can't recommend treatment because it's, it was a one time deal. You, you've been driving for almost five years and, and you've had plenty of randoms through other companies. Right. And this is the only one you fail. Damn she goes, man. I, she goes, one of my, one of my, and I'm like, I don't know. So she gave me a four hour, um, online class okay. for, uh, information or whatever on, on marijuana. So I did the class in one day, uh, did it in four and a half hours. And you was able to get cleared from that. And I got certified from that because I went through the class. I got certified for it and I got cleared and I'm able to drive it. Cause that's what DOT fucking, she, she does, she says what, that she has the authority of DOT to say what I can do and what I can't. Mm. Right. If, for that, if she recommends that and I can start driving again. Yeah. So I did it and I started driving for this company here because this company here is the one that told me about the shit. NDL, they didn't tell me about it. There's a company, NDL, that I worked for right after Shugo. They hired me, let me drive, and then fired me for wrecking a truck when I didn't even run it. When I didn't even, there's no way I could wreck a damn truck. And then decided to um, blacklist me by telling, by putting on my DAC report that I stole money from them. Oh, NDL. Oh, they put oh. in my DAC report. They put it on my DAC report that I misappropriated company funds. Oh, okay, okay. I had that taken off my DAC, by the way. Is this company you can go through called Higher Right? Yeah, I'm, and I'm, you can. Yeah, I'm definitely familiar with them. And you can get on there and fucking have anything, just about anything you can dispute. And it'll either be taken off your DAC report or changed. And that was taken off. But they tried to fucking blacklist me. Because any company looking to fucking hire me is going to see that on a DAC report and go, well, this fucker stole money from the company. Why the hell would we hire him? He's just going to steal money from us. It's called blacklisting. It's illegal as hell. Can't do that. So when I wrote in there that these guys were blacklisting me, by putting something false on my DAC report, they instantly took it off my DAC report because they know they could be sued for it. All right, brother, man. Well, let me go ahead and get on up out of here, man, so I can get some sleep. I got to get up at about midnight. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to yeah. fucking let you waste it, waste time with me as far as getting <laughs> to sleep, man. I know that's right, man. So let me go ahead and get on up out of here, and I'll call you I'll call you back in a minute, man, or, or call me, or whatever. Just... Holler at me, man. And we'll 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 definitely talk. Yeah, we'll get we'll we'll get into this shit just a little bit more. All right, that'll work, man. I'm out. All right, later, Sean. Yeah.